Praise the Lord. We want to talk about the kingdom, the kingdom of God, and why we need deliverance. Um, I'm considering the kingdom warfare, revelation or prophecy, then healing and deliverance. They all go together, the power gifts. And then deliverance is a power ministry. It's one of the messy ministry of Jesus Christ. And that's one of the things that actually popularized Jesus. And then he used it to demonstrate and showcase to us why the kingdom is superior to the kingdom of the devil. In fact, the kingdom is an announcement that another kingdom, a transcendent kingdom, a much more powerful kingdom, a dominant kingdom, and then a superior kingdom has come to displace the weak, inferior, infiltrating, evil, diabolical, and then the kingdom of darkness. So the kingdom of darkness, people don't know it's everywhere. They seem to be winning, but they are not winning. The thing is that darkness can never overpower light. The Bible said the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Darkness cannot overpower it. Darkness cannot subdue it. Darkness cannot even understand light. So the kingdom of God is the kingdom of light, is the kingdom of Jesus Christ, is the kingdom of power and greatness, is the kingdom of victory, is the kingdom of domination, is the kingdom of overflow, is the kingdom of winning, victory. So we're going to consider anytime you see healing, prophecy, deliverance, signs, wonders happening in the kingdom, it's normal. To us, we think it's miracle. We call it miracle. We think it's spectacular. We think it's extraordinary. But as far as the kingdom is concerned, it's normal. It's the normal activity of the kingdom. It's another day, a normal day in the kingdom. So if you notice what Jesus came to do, it's all about the kingdom. And he preached repentance. Then he preached salvation. But he never preached himself. He talked about his identity because your originality is tied to your identity and your origin will determine your originality. The Bible says Jesus knowing that he came from God and that he's going back to God and that God has given everything in his hands, authority. Jesus knowing that he came from God, origin or identity, where he came from. Then, that God has put everything in his hands. Authority. Authority is delegated power or the ability to use power. And that he go back to God, which is what we call destiny or destination, his ultimate goal. So you discover to uncover, if you must recover, that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But it's a total integrated package, not just abundant life. He also came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus also came in order that he might set the captives free. Not just salvation. People stop at the gospel of salvation and repentance. No. The gospel of the kingdom is full gospel. It's a total integrated package. It got everything in it. That's why it says, seek ye first the kingdom. Matthew 6, 33, and his righteousness and all these things, everything you seek is in the kingdom. Everything you need is in the kingdom. And because everywhere the king is, is where the kingdom is. That's where the kingdom dwells. And now you might ask me, what is the kingdom? The kingdom is the system of God, is the government of God. The kingdom is the pattern of God, the way of God, is the dominion of God, is the principle of God. Is the power of God. Is the unction to function of God. Is God's system of doing things. Is God's way of operation, of execution, of activity. So the kingdom is everything. In other words, kingdom is also government of God. So if you understand this, it's an acronym of two words. King and domain. Kingdom. The king is the leader, the crown, the royalty. Then domain is area of reign, area 
or jurisdiction of leadership, area of exercise of authority or power, or rulership or leadership. So this is why God is so amazing. So the kingdom starts as a supernatural kingdom. You know, the kingdom of this world started as conquest, conversion, and assimilation of defeated people. It doesn't matter which. But the kingdom of God starts as a spiritual force, as a spiritual entity. That's why we talk about the kingdom of heaven, which is the capital origin of the kingdom of God. And then you now have the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of heaven is the capital or the, the area or headquarter of God. And then that administers everything. Remember, the Bible said the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom ruleth over all. If God has established his kingdom and his kingdom ruleth or dominates or rules everything, both on earth and in heaven, everywhere the kingdom dominates, the kingdom rules, the kingdom reigns, the kingdom is transcendent. And then let's read this scripture very quickly. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew, I want to show you the ministry, the good standard, the Rolls Royce ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, what he accomplished as far as the kingdom is concerned. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. 423 Matthew and you see how God began to do things and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom did you notice that today people talk about gospel of prosperity gospel of salvation gospel of repentance and they all missed it all is the gospel of the kingdom is God everything so people take the kingdom out of context. I call it the principle of reductionism. They take what they want. You know, the old country buffet says all you can eat. But you know what people do? They pick and choose. And they don't like the vegetable. Anything that is sweet, they, 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 they drop it. They, they do whatever they want. You know, <laughs> I was taken to old country buffet when I came to the U.S. newly. So <laughs> I, I was... Just speaking and choosing. The guy said, no, take the fruit and vegetable. It's good for you. But I was busy taking, picking and choosing. Well, that's what people do today. So the kingdom of God is a total integrated experience. It's a total comprehensive package. Everything is in God. Everything is established in God. Now, let me finish what I'm reading before I get ahead of myself. And then it says, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Look at 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. And those which were possessed with devils. And those which were lunatic. And those that had the palsy. And he healed them all. Amazing. So if you don't understand the kingdom, you will not understand spiritual warfare, healing and deliverance. And you won't understand signs and wonders and miracles. Why? Here you see the gospel. What you preach will determine the result you get. If you are not preaching the kingdom, you can teach about deliverance, write books on deliverance, talk about deliverance, pray about deliverance, do everything, but you won't break yoke, you won't break shackle, you won't break chain because the kingdom element is missing. The kingdom construct and concept is missing. The kingdom understanding is not there. The kingdom perspective is not there. The kingdom viewpoint is lacking. And because of that, you see people who are preachers, but they are talk show hosts. They are name brand preachers. They are talking head. And that's why when people tell me, oh, he's a good preacher, I say, does he break yokes? Does he get results? When he prays for people, do they get healed? Are they delivered? Because the Bible said the kingdom is not in words. He said the kingdom is in power. Demonstration of power. Apostle Paul said, I didn't come to you with enticing words of men's wisdom. I came to you with the Holy Ghost and demonstration of power so that your 
Faith will not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. The Bible says in the last days that there are people who will come having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He said, from such, turn away. See, if you are not powerful, you start making excuses for the power failure in the church. And demons will be having their hair day. Demons will be incubated. Demons are welcomed. Demons are actually resident. Demons run the place. Whether you like it or not, there's no neutral ground. Oh, I'm blessed. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Look, a lot of people will cast that demons are Christians who love Jesus. But because nobody is exercising dominion, nobody is exercising authority, nobody is exercising their God-given power, unction to function, the anointing, they breaks the yoke. Some people will preach and preach and preach and pray. Look at some demons here. They keep on saying, oh, she's been praying. She's been fasting. I'm like, demon. Why didn't you leave her alone? What people don't know is that some demons operate inside. Some demons follow people around. Some demons lodge at one part of the body or the other. Sometimes they cause pain. Sometimes things crawl in the body. Sometimes they are there only when the person is sleeping. During dream, they show themselves and begin to program or manipulate dreams. Or some of them are not even around. They do it from a remote station. A true remote control. See, people got remote control now, recently. But do you know, in the spirit realm, remote control is not a new technology. It's not a new technology. In the spirit realm, remote control has been there. Demons have been using remote control. Just like now, we are even dealing away with remote control. Uh, 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 it's no longer there any longer. Well, the same way in the realm of spirit. So some demons walk by remote control. Some people have, or some demons have follow, follow. Some demons just monitor and follow people around. That's why some deliverances, after doing the deliverance, when the husband and wife get some, they start fighting again. Because the demon went and some demon will say, yes, yes, you cast him out, but I wait, I wait for him in the parking lot. Or I go home and wait for them. So if you are not the one pleading blood, taking authority, praying, and taking control of your house, pleading the blood of Jesus Christ, calling on the angel, deploying your angel, activating your angel, quickening your angel, releasing your angel on assignment, and there is change of God. And then because you confess the word of God, because of your constant prayer, your angels are the one that actually does the deliverance. Sometimes we think it's the Holy Spirit, but it is the angel that are the ministering spirits. They are the one. The Holy Spirit will break the yoke. The Holy Spirit deploys the angel. The Holy Spirit protects and releases. The Holy Spirit is God, but angels are not God. Angels are servants. Angels are ministering spirits. The Bible says in Hebrew, say, are they not ministering spirits sent to, to God to help to serve those who are heads of salvation, you and I? And the Bible says, how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? It's talking about the salvation or deliverance by angels. There are different deliverance angel, breakthrough angel, battle angel, warfare angel. And you cannot succeed in spiritual warfare without the ministry and intervention of angels. And Jesus Christ is their leader. The Bible says he's the king or the lord of hosts, the host of the army of angels. The lord of hosts. So if you discover here, you have to recover and then decipher and decode the fact that Jesus' ministry was popularized because of deliverance. And I must warn us, and I will say this, demons do not go without a fight. Very few occasions, when they see power, they start trembling and they can leave. Most often, there's always a fight. That's where spiritual warfare comes in. The enemy put us in bondage to actually cage us to have authority, to have dominion over us, to ensnare, to enslave, to entangle, to barricade or enslave us so that he can have authority over us. And the Bible said the devil does not grant deliverance. He opened not the door of the prison for his enemy. But Jesus, the Bible said he came to set the captives free. So if you are thinking that, eh, because I pray the devil will leave. 
<laughs> this is where people get it wrong. And then there's also this demonic teaching that you can pray your way out of anything. No, it's anointing that breaks the yoke. Can God use prayer? Of course, God uses prayer and fasting, especially on the part of the minister. That's why God gave us deliverance prophets to break yokes, to break shackles, to break chains. Unfortunately, most Christians don't do deliverance as a result of religion. Re deliverance has to be impacted by revelation. A lot of people don't know until they go through problems. Like Michael Tyson always say, is everybody has a plan until they get hit. Sometimes what introduces us to deliverance is spiritual attacks. And without that, we won't even know God. That's why we start searching the internet. And that's how you found me. Yes, because if everything was right, if everything was right, you don't need me. If your pastor can do deliverance, you don't need me. I probably will be dealing with authors, other aspects of deliverance. Because there are different levels and dimension and degree and uh, realms of deliverance. Because the church have stopped teaching the demonic realm of the spirit. They are denying the demons. They think that the demons have gone to Africa and India. The greatest demon I've ever seen is in the United States. That's where I nearly lost my life. Not in Africa. I never encountered that robber anywhere in Nigeria. But it was in the United States that I nearly died because I ignored deliverance. My original calling in the 90s, I was teaching motivation. I was teaching all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, prosperity, even though it's part of the kingdom teaching. But you don't take it out of context. I teach prosperity as integrated pack package, as part of the kingdom consciousness and kingdom benefits. God will always bless his people. God take care of his own. So I was teaching everything. It was trouble that forced me back to deliverance that God called me in the 90s. God called me in the 90s, equipped me. He even told me that you'll be speaking, people will be delivered. So I'm like, God, how will it happen? Because that time we only know about prophecy and laying on of hands. Now I'm not only seeing it, I'm witnessing it. So I don't deny deliverance because I'm a product of deliverance. Without deliverance, I won't be talking to you now. And if Jesus can receive deliverance, when they wanted to kill him, Herod wanted to kill him, they took him back to Africa. For God to fulfill his prophecy that out of Africa, have I called out my son? Because every child from two years down was killed by King Herod, who was a, a destiny hunter, a star hunter. He inquired from the wise men from the east. The time the star, that special star, appeared, they told him two years ago, and they didn't have a technology. Being an occultist, being a stargazer, an astrologer, he knew the time that star appeared in the horizon, and he told them to kill every child from two years down, and Jesus escaped. That was deliverance. So if Jesus can receive deliverance, people are hiding. Deliverance is not about concealing. Deliverance is about revealing. When we ask them one question, it's not for information. It was for confrontation. And also for us to learn, for education is medication. People say knowledge is power, but this application, however, knowledge is the power. If you don't know, you will not flow. You got to be in the know to be in the flow if you must be in the glow. So if you understand deliverance, you will understand spiritual warfare, you will understand healing, you will understand deliverance, you will understand breakthrough, you will understand signs and wonder, you will understand prosperity because the enemy do not allow you to prosper. If you want prosperity or breakthrough or miracle of turnaround or victory or progress, prepare for war. The devil is not going to just sit there idly and watch you progress. I'm a child of God. I'm making you. He will bring temptation. He will bring trials. He will bring tribulations. He will bring adversity, which is God's university. And God will allow it to make you develop your spiritual muscle and spiritual antenna so that you know how to fight. God doesn't care how tall you grow. God doesn't care much how big you grow. He doesn't care even how rich you grow. For the most part, some of us that talk a lot about prosperity, God says he's the least in the kingdom. He's the least in the kingdom. God cares how strong you grow because the war is coming. The fight is coming. The, the 
Warfare is coming. God is interested in warfare. The Bible says the Lord is a man of war. How could he be giving us all this instrument that from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffereth violence and men and women of violence take it by force. So you see that and be watching Redon and Netflix of your last favorite movie and then start saying, I'm covered by the blood. Okay, we'll see. The devil, the devil loves such ignoramuses because they just talk and become complacent and demon knows them because he sees them. He knows their strength. He knows their power. He knows their capacity in spiritual warfare. You don't just know your enemy. You know your level of authority and degree of dominion. And if you are not working in kingdom dominion power, you become a prey to the enemy. They eat you alive. You are just a sitting dog talking, talking head. And that's why you see all, all, all the preachers, the way they talk, the way they decipher things shows that they don't have a clue. And cause people are running around looking for deliverance. What Jesus did. And I asked them, you are doing the work of Jesus. So how come you remove deliverance? Oh, it's not my ministry. Listen, just the deliverance at the lower level, at the grand level, is nobody's ministry. That's why deliverance is not part of the fivefold ministry. It's not part of the night gift of the spirit. You wouldn't see deliverance listed. Because it's so important that it transcends every realm. It transcends every gift. It transcends every calling, fivefold ministry. It doesn't matter. I cast out that demon from worship leaders, from bishops, from pastors, from their wife, and all that. And one joker will tell you, Christians don't have demon. Can Christians have demon? And they are arguing. Look, Christians can have anything. They will In fact, Christians can even have things not because of their fault, but because of their background or what they expose themselves to. You saw the lady last week. She didn't do anything. That dear lady was honest. It was innocent. It was clean. She was living righteous. And I asked the demon, why are you here? What's the legal ground? What's the legal right? What is it that you, what's the reason why you're attacking her? Because we teach in deliverance that there's legal ground, there's legal right, there's uh, entry point or demonic doorway or open door. Guess what? There was none. And demon confirmed it. Now, does it mean that the lady is 100% uh, innocent? No. In other words, there was nothing in her that the enemy was targeting on. The enemy just wanted to destroy her destiny. So when people tell you, oh, if you're a child of God, nothing will happen to you, make sure you know the rules of engagement. Make sure you understand the spirit realm. Make sure there's no open door. Make sure that you are covered by the blood. Make sure that you know how to fight. Make sure that you are equipped. Make sure that you are strong in the Lord and the power of his words. He say, put on the whole armor of God. But before he say, put on the armor, he say, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Before, in Ephesians 6, the warfare chapter. Then 10 says that, then 11 started picking up that, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Wrestling is the closest part of, of closest type of combat. It's not just fight, it's resto. That means the thing is there, you know, fighting you as, as the case may be. I want to read a few things again in strategic level warfare because if you understand teaching deliverance without the kingdom, then it's not complete. I see people teach kingdom, and which is good, but they don't touch on deliverance. They even do healing meetings, and they don't do deliverance. Because you are doing healing, but the problem behind it is demon. So you can go to all the hospital. There's nothing doctor can do because there's no equipment to diagnose demons, except the power of the Holy Spirit. And people have forgotten that. People depend on their equipment. They depend on modern technology. Let me tell you, science and wonders is far better and greater and much more powerful and transcendent than science and technology. We need both, but we need science and wonders more. And that is what is lacking in power failure in the church. So, child of God, we need to break yoke. We need to break shackle. So, anybody teaching deliverance, and the kingdom will succeed, will excel, will do exactly like Jesus. Because that's what we're here to do. Everything Jesus called us to do, one word or the other, 
involve his ministry or his type of ministry. Believe it or not. So if we don't do that kind of thing or that kind of ministry, then it will really be hard to know when to confront the enemy. And, and by reason of practical deliverance, whenever you are a kingdom person with your kingdom dominion mindset and your kingdom authority, your function, function to function, people see me touch, but they don't know what I'm doing. The Bible said the kingdom is within you because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. So when you touch in deliverance, we call it Reiki. Reiki. You are probing the demon. You see me touch the person several times. That hand is like the hand of Jesus extended. It's a sledgehammer. Don't forget I'm called to do this thing. Everything the enemy is doing, he learned from God. When God called us and brought us into his kingdom, what does he do? What did he do? He filled us with the Holy Spirit. What does demon do? He tried to fill people too with the evil spirit. So we need to cast it out. So when I touch and touch, I'm probing the demon. When you touch several times, because they tend to hide, they are forces of darkness. When you probe several times, they are like, oh. You see a little girl talking with a baritone like an old man. They make animal noise. Sometimes they hiss like a snake. Sometimes they drew, they crawl, or mow like a cow. Or sometimes they bark like a dog. You see people barking. Why? Because when the demons fail, they took the characteristics, the idiosyncrasies, the nature and activity of the base animal, birds, creatures, and entities. For instance, smell. The last woman that came, smell was falling everywhere. And they go to the doctors. It's not about taking a bath. It's not about a shower. It's not about something, a rat or something dying near your house. No. This one follows her everywhere. Sometimes some of them, is, there's a corner around the house that stinks. Because demons have foul smell. That's why we call them unclean or foul spirits. There's no mystery about this um, others. Look at the Bible. A holy place. The Bible said there's a man in the synagogue with a spirit of an unclean demon. Jesus was preaching someone. The man walked in. A church. We can call it church today. Of course, the Jews still have synagogue. So the demons don't care. They come to church. In fact, demons love church because people gather and they want we are like in you know, a coronavirus, if you get a super spreader, the corona is doing a great job. Because that's why they want spreaders. So the same thing with demons. So when they come where people gather, they spread the thing. Then if the demon is coming like a force or like a wind or it's coming like a shadow or a silhouette or like breeze or evil wind or cold chills or sometimes they come like a presence. Sense a presence. They come in different ways. So when they make animal noise and so on, they manifest in different ways. So when you probe the demon, they manifest because you need them to manifest before you cast them out. Or before you force them out. And the exorcism is just one type of deliverance. That's why you could see me, I don't use the word exorcism. Because it's not in the Bible. The reason is that deliverance is far more than casting out demons. People don't deal with breaking curses, altars, unresolved issues of foundation, altars, generational curses, spirit spouses, program and projection from the altars. If you understand altar and the marine world, you decode 95% of your dreams. Because the demons that come from the waters create more problems. And they are very recalcitrant, they're very stubborn. 85% of ancestral spirit are marine spirit because 85% of land is water. We used to say 30%, but according to US Naval Research, if you consider the inland waters and lakes and creeks and, and, and all that, you discover that it's more than 80%. That's where my estimation comes from. See that? So marine spirit or marine powers or marine authors create problems. That's why they come into the dream. 
They infiltrate dreams, manipulate dreams to manipulate destiny. They program dreams. They can do anything in your dream. That's why there's no way you can be in deliverance without decoding, demystifying, explaining, espousing, expanding, and then applying the dream you dream. If you don't know about dream, forget deliverance because there's no point. Because you can't take history of deliverance without dream. And dream is the spirit word or spirit realm. Sometimes we call it astral word. Astra means stars or word of spirits. That's why we call astral projection. The person is projecting his spirit out of his body. And then there's astral travel. He's traveling the spirit world and can do anything to human beings that are unsuspecting. You see, one of the things I tell people and I tell myself and tell children of God is, ask God to open your eyes. When God opens your eyes, you see beyond the veil. You see into the un un unseen realm. You know the unknown. You begin to see demons around people. Sometimes they look like monkey. Sometimes they look like cat. Sometimes they look like dog. Sometimes they look like uh, creatures you wouldn't even, grotesque creatures, creatures you can't even describe. Then you have to ask God to shut it down because you start suspecting people. You see family members, everybody having one demon or the other that's behind their problem. I wouldn't know. That's why there's no problem without an evil spirit behind that problem. Every evil has evil spirit behind it, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. Satan doesn't even care what you believe. Hey, I don't believe in all this deliverance. You think it will stop Satan? In fact, Satan likes you. They, Satan loves spiritual ignoramuses so that you can keep them under lock and key, keep them blinded, and do whatever you like to finish them and their destiny. In fact, people who don't believe, Satan loves them very much. Because as long as you don't believe, you're a sitting dog. Because you don't know. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Because they have ignored or neglected knowledge, the Lord said they have gone into captivity. He said, I have even forsaken you and I will forsake your children. I will forsake you from, um, remove you from being priests over my people. So kingdom is an, a very powerful concept and let me summarize this. If you understand how the kingdom operates, because remember, Jesus said, why men slept the enemy came and sold tires. People don't know that the dream also is the kingdom. Jesus gave us the parable of the kingdom. And sometimes we don't look at it the way Jesus gave it. Because they don't, the people don't know that it's part of the kingdom. Let, let's look at it. Why men slept? The enemy came and sold tires and went his way. And let me read this, child of God. <laughs> Look at Matthew 13, 24. He said, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed theirs among the wheat, and went his way. As if nothing happened. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So in other words, Satan will plant whatever he wants during sleep. He can plant fry bread. He can plant poverty. He can plant sickness and disease. He can plant all kinds of tumors or growth. It can plant arrow of diabetes. It can plant arrow of high blood pressure. It can plant arrow of arthritis. It can plant migraine headache. It can plant eye problem issues. And then you go and they scan around the test. Oh, doctor said everything is all right. <laughs> and then they say, oh, no. Everything is fine. Then if everything is fine and all the test is good, why are you sick? And you are still sick. And you are running from doctor to doctor. This is the kingdom. Now look at the one. I will read this one so that uh, we go into the deliverance proper. And because I don't want to be part of the talk show host I'm talking about. And then <laughs> I don't want to be a motivational speaker. I'm not one. I, t I thought motivation had nearly died. Some people are probably calling to it. And I'm not going to teach motivation. I'm, I'm here to break your can shackle and chains. 
generational causes and demonic infiltration. The greatest place in your house is your restroom. I ask people, so what's the greatest place in the house? Some people say bedroom, some people say my office, my meditation room, my uh, sitting room. I say, no, God said it's your restroom. I was shocked because we don't think. Why? Elimination. If you look at a child, when you give birth to a child, number one thing that costs money more than anything is the diapers and pampers. In fact, if you don't clean up, everything will be in a mess. That's why the church is in a mess. Nobody is doing deliverance and they think they can bypass it or sweet talk against it or, or cancel it or pretend it's not there. When you want to pull, you now know the importance of the restroom. If you don't have it in the house, the whole beautiful house is gone. Even the white house it must have restroom. God says the most important because of deliverance. In the body of Christ, people go for the eye and the nervous system, which is the prophetic. They go for the musculoskeletal system or the reproductive system, which is evangelism. They go for the, the talking, the preaching. But nobody goes for the elimination, removing the waste, removing the contaminants, removing the pollutants, removing the infiltrators. That's why churches have no power because they incubate this demon. Demon keep on causing trouble. Because if you are not casting them out, you are welcoming them. They are there, believe it or not. You might think they, don't, they are not there. That's why the church is sick. That's why I look at people. They have diabetes, di arthritis, high blood pressure, obesity, and all these things. And the, all these arrows. Some people can't even lose weight no matter how they try. Because of this demon. There are demons that look like balloon. It's a demon of obesity. No matter what you try, you won't lose the weight. We've been casting it out here. The demon said, no, I, I gave him the weight gain. Ha! Weight wa. Ha! See, people don't know this thing. And they say, oh, it's my gland. No, it's demon. If you don't deal with the demon, that's gone. So let me read this one before I get at that. There are different dimensions because I'm teaching the kingdom. Everything is in the kingdom and the elimination is the most important aspect of the kingdom. And that's where we ignore. Look at, that's what made Jesus' ministry popular and powerful. They even say, what kind of doctrine is that? Even the demon obey him. Because deliverance is how you exercise authority and dominion. The only way you exercise power. Because we are not giving dominion over human spirits. We are giving dominion over demonic spirits and spiritual forces and entities. That's why if you want to marry a person, even if you are an angel, you have to beg her. You have to ask her, will you marry me? Because we are not giving authority. If you come and force her, you are in trouble. One brother did it in our church. We told her, no, the girl say he doesn't love you. He doesn't like you. Leave her alone. No, I will fast and pray. She must agree. I say, oh my God, are you a tyrant? That's how demons behave. Nobody invites them. Even God has to take permission from Mary before Jesus was born. Before the angel disappeared, Mary agreed. But that Jesus would not be born. Because nobody in this earth that came any other way is illegal until you go through a woman back and now. God does not violate his own law. That's why God cannot do nothing in most of cases because he gave you and I authority and dominion. Even if the demon is running around, God will keep quiet. Until somebody say, you know what? Let's take authority and get out. We clean up this mess from this. Jesus did it twice in his ministry. The beginning of the ministry, the cleansing of the temple at the end because of the importance of deliverance. It's a picture, prophetic picture of deliverance and cleansing and purging and elimination. So let me read this while I close. Yeah, look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, divided against itself is brought to the solution. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall, how shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast a devil, by whom 
do your children cast them out. Therefore, they shall be your judges. 28. But if I cast a devil by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Wow. So I'm casting it out, not by magic, not by asking you to buy this, buy this, buy hen, buy cow, buy chalk, buy this for the deliverance, for cleansing. That's a pissing demon. They will come back. See, he cast it out by the fire and power of the Holy Spirit. And then 29, or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, okay? And then he will spoil his house. Wow. So, the Lord is calling Satan and his demonic cohorts, strong man, especially here, he was referring to Beelzebub particularly. But you have to bind and exercise authority and dominion and destroy it. A lot of us are not exercising our kingdom dominion power. See, the policeman has the badge of authority. He's wear that uniform. Can be a little lady, but he can stop a teen wheeler. I've even seen a lady coach, a lady referee, trust out Shaquille O'Neal, who is six feet, nearly 350 pounds, out of the court because she's got authority of NBA. But what about if the enemy want to mess up? You pull your gun, you pull your trigger. And that's what we are not exercising. Not only will you have authority, which is delegated power, or the right to exercise function to function and power and anointing, but you also got to have your own fire power. That's where a lot of times people look for me, for the higher grace. I cry out for that power. I told God, I said, this is the grace I want. This is the kind of anointing I want to help your people. I don't want to do deliverance on a lower level. I don't want to every day I'm doing deliverance prayer. I don't want to die praying. Because it's too much tension. Yes, I love prayer. I pray in tongue every time. I can't do without prayer. But people who emphasize prayer, not knowing the tools in the kingdom, everything counts. Every tool counts. Sometimes the demon get used of your instrument, the blood, the name, and so on. Then you have to use other instrument you don't use, like sledgehammer of the Holy Spirit, the flaming sword of the Lord, and then the east wind of the Lord. You can also use the thunder and brimstone and all that. There are so many instruments of war. Or even angels, ferocious angels, to go and fight for you. So, child of God, I thank you. See what Jesus said here? Say it's about kingdom. So deliverance is about kingdom expression, kingdom power, kingdom visibility, kingdom consciousness, and kingdom dominance, and kingdom victory. God bless you, Dr. Ozo. Bye-bye. We want to go to the deliverance. I uh, just want to pray for our audience. I see some of our uh, followers uh, in, online. Father, I thank you for your people. Another time I promise you I will try to answer some questions. Uh, you probably might send to me because every Saturday now I'm more constant. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We give you praise. As we go into the deliverance, our Lord God Almighty, take absolute control, take absolute preeminence, come and lead, reign, and rule. As usual, your kingdom has already come. Your kingdom is here. It's in us. You say the kingdom is not just near. The kingdom is within us. And we are expressing kingdom, dominion, authority, and mandate right now, right here. And Father, we are sorry for not expressing our kingdom power because the enemy will express his own. Thank you, Father, for the grace. Thank you for higher authority and dominion. Thank you, Father, because we're not going to be sitting around wondering, but we're sitting around exercising our power, doing the little you've called us to do in healing, in deliverance, in breakthrough, in miracle of turnaround, in science and wonder for ourselves, our church, our community, our friends, our relatives, our, our colleagues. That's why you called us, oh God. To be light, oh God, as we do all this and we are gaining ground, we are expanding the kingdom, we are transcending, we are advancing the kingdom. We give you praise for that. We honor you, we magnify you. Thank you for your people. We give you all the grace, all the honor, all the adoration because you've given it back to us. We give you all the adoration, might and dominion. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. We ask you to take absolute preeminence of this deliverance. Holy Spirit, we invite you officially. We ask you to reign and rule. 
ask you to dominate. Holy Spirit will ask you to do the work, do what no man can do, do the impossible, do the unusual, do the miracle, do the signs and wonder. Thank you for the breakthrough. Thank you because you've already delivered your people. We are here as occupation army. We are here to enforce the law, to enforce the defeat of the enemy, to enforce to bury the enemy completely, to exclude the enemy because of your life, because of your kingdom power you've given us kingdom authority and dominion and we are exercising our kingdom mandate thank you for the grace a higher dimension of your favor thank you because you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the very power the power of the holy ghost that walketh in us through us in us with us for we pray in jesus name and people of god say amen amen, amen.